Welcome to our busy webinar. This is Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Delighted to have you here for Marketing Across Generations, connecting with your customers no matter their ages. So we're going to talk about a lot of things today, but first wanted to get through a few admin details. First, if you'd like to reach us or ask me questions during the event, you can send an email to dave at busyweb.com, or if you're experiencing some sort of technical difficulty, dial us at 612-4-BUSY-O. 4249990. You can request the PowerPoint deck and notes by emailing me. And here's how to ask questions live. We have a link that you're probably viewing our event on right now. And we see we have a bunch of viewers already on. So from this page, you're welcome to either stream the event as you probably are by clicking the play button in this window. And don't forget that once you do click the play button, you can make it full screen to see better. If you'd like to ask questions or provide your input on working with marketing to different generations, we'd love to hear that and have you click on this Google Plus link that I've highlighted right here. If you click on that Google Plus link, it's going to take you to this page. From this page, you're going to see a button that says Q&A and Live, and you can press Play. When you do press Play, it's going to open up a new window and you'll be able to ask questions live here. This is, again, a full screen of our event. And in the lower right-hand corner of that event window, there's a green button that says Ask a New Question. If you click that Ask a New Question button, you can ask a question here. So if you do that or if you want to provide any details, would love to hear how the weather is out by where you are, just uh, let me know how everything's going. One small additional note, if things do freeze or slow down or any of those things during the event, it's probably just the encoder catching up with the broadcast. There's nothing going on and it will pick right back up. It just needs a few seconds. We'll note and uh, you'll be able to simply rewind if you want to go back and you can do that by scrubbing along the timeline on the event down at the bottom. So if you scrub backwards a little bit, you'll be able to see that. And especially if the screen freezes or if something happens, it's probably just your internet connection. Depending on the speed of your internet, sometimes things hang or they need to buffer a little bit. And that's probably what's happening there. So, so again, ask questions by clicking the green button. Go ahead and click on that green button and get in there by clicking the big Google Plus link. Or of course, you can just watch right here by clicking the play button and expand that screen and again if you want to ask questions after the event or if you're feeling shy and you don't want to use the q a tool during the event go ahead and send me an email at dave at busyweb.com and that'll get right to me so first wanted to go in and just share a little bit about who we are what we do BusyWeb is a digital marketing agency. We're located just north of Minneapolis in uh, Minnesota, and we service our clients with all kinds of digital marketing services, including website design, social media integration and action, and all kinds of wonderful content like email marketing, search engine optimization, digital marketing and Google ads, and of course, writing and emails. So everything that you need from a small business perspective, BusyWeb can actually handle that for you. It's kind of like outsourced IT, but instead of outsourcing your IT, you're outsourcing your marketing and relying on a team of experts to get you the results that you're looking for. That's it, that's us, and let's get into why we're here today, and that's to learn about millennials and all of the other generations. First, we went through a bit about us, so we're good here, and then we're gonna go through an overview of generations and who they are, what they do, the, the details inside of what generations really mean and how you can use that as shorthand to reach specific types of consumers or target markets. We're gonna go through four generations today. We're gonna talk through traditionals, boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z. So actually that's five, I suppose. But um, all of these have specific age ranges and details, and we'll go through a little bit at the end to wrap things up and to help you figure out what it all means and how to look at this. Here's a brief overview on all of the generations. 
First, traditionals are generally born between 1925 and 1945. That makes them older than 70. And in general, these are the folks that lived through the Depression, probably remember some things before the advent or ease, ease of accessibility of radio and television. They've been around and they've seen probably the most dramatic amount of change out of any of the generations that we're going to talk through. Um, boomers are the baby boomers, of course, and that's from the generation right after the Second World War, so 1946 to 1964, saw a whole lot of political turmoil and change in their environment. Um, this is the Vietnam War era folks, the folks that were um, prescribed into service through Vietnam, probably a lot of social change it kind of outlines the boomers. And of course, they are the largest, or until the millennials came along, were the largest generation. So gener Generation X is from 65 to 79, in their 30s to their fifth to their early, early 50s. And Generation X is really kind of the sandwich generation. We're the ones in the middle. I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer. And this is the folks that really saw the advent of the computer and that started to see, you know, typing and the clicker and all of the other things that we got into. So this is really the advent of the PC age from, you know, when we were young in 79 to when we started getting into our big, big kind of managerial roles that we're in right now. So we're, most of us tend to be right around the 40s. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Millennials are probably the most maligned generation right now. And they are also by far the largest generation, or certainly will be by 2025. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but there's a large push. This is the echo boom, or the folks that are probably the kids of the boomers and or Gen X. And so as you look at the millennial generation, they're completely digital native. They've grown up inside of, at a minimum, PCs, and at, an, at a probably most obvious point, the folks that are just conversant in having everything readily available to them in the digital realm. You, you've always been able to Google since you've been young, if you're a millennial. And so you can look things up, information is readily available, and there are devices that are built that you can carry with you wherever you go and that you can rely on. That's just always been there. And then Gen Z, the folks that are under 16, 2001 and, and up, those folks are still you know, in school and they're learning, but they were completely growing up inside of the mobile generation. So they make no distinction between a PC and a phone or a tablet. There's just the internet and you just get at it at whatever device you happen to see in front of you. They were raised on phones. They understand everything as far as how things go. You know, interestingly, the iPhone was around since they could read most for most of the point of the Generation Z. And so, you know, there's always been a point and click or a point and interact interface with the digital world for Generation Z. So there's a lot of stuff happening in here. And interestingly, right now for us, every single one of the generations that we're talking about are still in the workforce right now. You know, traditionals, the folks that are you know, probably on the younger side of the traditionals, um, it's also known as the greatest generation, the silent generation, um, or that, that kind of range. Um, some of them are still working because, let's face it, the market it hasn't been all that fantastic for the past 10 years. And so they might still be working. They might probably be doing something a little outside of their careers, such as they were. And they're still interacting with the world, and certainly they're still consuming. And so, you know, traditionals are still out there. Boomers, Generation X, Millennials, um, they're all working or working age right around there. And then Generation Z is just starting to come online and starting to work at some of those smaller jobs and getting into some of the entrepreneurial stuff. So we're seeing some interesting stories about, you know, kids in their teenage years that are starting to do some pretty amazing things. And they've just always had it. 
And so every single one of these groups is in the workforce and is certainly consuming interest in media and something that as businesses and business owners, we need to think about how we're going to reach those particular groups. So that's a big part of what we're going to talk about today. And now I want to dig down a little bit more into the traditionals. But before I do, let's skip back over. Just checking to make sure we don't have any questions. Looks like we are good. Again, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, simply click on this Google Plus link. That's going to open up into a window that looks just like this. And remark to us how weather's looking out by you. You know, if you're sweltering in the heat like we are in Minneapolis here, it's going to be close to 100 with the heat index in Minneapolis. Um, or if you have other comments or questions or thoughts about different generations. And maybe tell me what generation you're in. You know, I'm a boomer, or not a boomer, I'm a Gen Xer. And, uh, you know, my parents are boomers and uh, grandparents are the traditionals. And uh, my kids are going to be, you know, Gen Z. So you know, that's kind of how all of this stuff works. But would love to hear your input and kind of your age range, age range as we go through this. Um, okay, so let's keep moving and talk about traditionals. So traditionals, from a marketing perspective, are mostly retired and tend to be more conservative in their spending. They are skeptical and with good reason. A lot of the folks that have not been raised in the digital ages tend to be a little bit more open to be ballyhooed by some of the scammers and things. So folks that are on devices now that have never had that before are more likely and more susceptible to scams. Um, people are calling and asking for information. And especially as folks enter their waning years and lose a little bit of the filter that they may have had in previous generation or in previous years, um, there's a lot of danger. And so you have to be careful with traditional generation because rightly so, they are very skeptical. They're mostly retired, of course, but they're also very conservative in their spending. They've had, they have a fixed income if they're not working, and even if they are, they realize that they're going to be on fixed income of some sort in the near future. Um, health probably isn't what it used to be. Um, they are consuming traditional media, so these are the holdouts for the newspaper and the yellow pages. Um, TV and radio is still a good way to meet to reach them, as well as direct mail. Also, we're finding that direct mail in particular, it's a little bit harder to reach these folks because they might be in retirement communities or they may have moved into different facilities or are starting to get more mobile again after they've retired. So, you know, there, there may be homes or there may be other places that are filtering that kind of information and data from them. So direct mail is a little bit less effective than traditional media. So TV, radio, um, newspaper, face-to-face -face is very beneficial and very helpful to traditionals, but again, they're harder to reach. Um, mobile devices have really shifted the consumption patterns for traditionals. They skipped the entire PC revolution. They were old enough that they weren't really interested, by and large, in the PCs and all of the point and click and the GUIs and the interfaces that um, many of us, either boomers or Gen Xers, had to live through and, and get. Um, instead, they've shot right forward into the world of the iPad where you can just take your finger and poke at the information that you want. And so the value in mobile devices and the ability to shift consumption, making sure that your screen resolution can be enhanced or you can make the text sizes larger on your mobile device is a big benefit for folks. I mean, well, let's let's be let's be honest here. 71 plus folks, you know, our eyesight isn't as good as it used to be. So being able to zoom in, pinch and zoom, or just have data automatically reformat depending on the preference of the user. Um, parents and grandparents are usually um, this this kind of age range, and if they're not wearing glasses, they're zooming things in. You know, you may have a very fancy iPhone, but you probably have huge text on that iPhone so that you can read it easily. So making sure that you're focusing on benefits, on tangible details, and giving people reasons to work with you more than anything is what a traditional 
um, person, someone age 71 or older, is likely to value. This is more of a personal generation. These folks expect to be spoken to. And so if you need to, and if you have a need to reach the traditional generation, you know, make sure that you've got some um, phone marketing built in to what you do and some outreach and some print. Make sure that that print is tangible and easy to read. You know, road signs and banners and digital kind of marketing that's along road sides needs to be incredibly clear and incredibly easy to read. I see all this stuff quite often in print and on especially road signs that there's not enough contrast between the text and the background and or it's too small or there's too much to read. If you can't read it inside of three seconds, if you have good eyeballs, you're going to miss the traditional market because it takes them a little bit longer to focus in and a, long, a little bit longer to reach. You need to focus with everyone really, but in particular with the oldest two generations on focusing on what they need to know in order to feel okay with working with you. So this is all narrative. It's all telling your story. It's all about making things as simple as possible, but no simpler, and letting them dig around and dig deeper as they connect. So, you know, this this is just a very kind of you we we know the grandparents sort of generation is interested in those sorts of things, but you know, you have to reach them how you can. And so that's that's traditionals. Any questions on traditionals? Want to skip back? Uh, hot here in Phoenix, Arizona, says Jody. Thank you, Jody. And uh, Jody, if you want to let me know what uh, what generation you identify in, that would be fantastic. It's, uh, it's the same here. It's going to be a heat index of 115 tomorrow, and that's a wet heat. So, you know, the dry heat in Phoenix is is wonderful, and I've been there when it's been that hot. But you know, when you get up above 90 or 100, it's just hot no matter where you are. So thanks, Jody, for, po for posting in. All right, so we've got traditionals down, the retirees, the folks that have not grown up inside of the PC world or really inside of media. When they were 12 years old, you know, they were still, let's see, let me do the math backwards. 12 years old is 1957 for the youngest traditionals. So, you know, think about that. That's the birth of rock and roll. And that's the birth of radio and the connection. And some folks remember before electricity was available. You know, 1940s and 1950s vehicle is an entirely different thing now than some of the older, than some of the younger folks. So that's traditionals. Boomers, high end and material items. These folks have recently retired or at that or are at that age where they are at their peak of earning years. And there's a difference as, as far as consumers go. We go from yearning to earning and then back in, or from learning to earning and then yearning. And so these folks have been earning and they're moving into their yearning, yearning for younger days, yearning for things that have happened, yearning for physical and financial security. So high-end things. This is where the market for luxury items and goods largely focuses. And it's kind of shifting into boomers and some successful millennials. But these are the folks that have a good amount of disposable income if they've been working themselves um, hard. So they're nearing retirement. Um, as of right now, I believe the current numbers say that about 10,000 boomers are retiring every single day. Um, they've been called the me generation, you know, the, the baby boomer generation was massive. This is the generation right after the second world war. And there was a lot of baby activity right after that. So for folks between that 1946 up until the mid, oh, let's see from 46 to 64 or so, um, those folks, there was just a lot of upheaval and change. And so when they were at that critical kind of age where they were starting to think about and make their decisions when they were about 12, you know, that was, you know, again, like 50 or between the 50s and the 70s. So that was a high kind of news and upheaval 
just from a generational activity um, kind of range. So they're, they're used to and they accept change. They instigated a lot of that change and they're okay with technology, but at an arm's length, I'd say. So they, they grew up on the TV and they knew telephones and certainly came of age and they were in their working in the working world in the advent of email so you know i'd say tv telephone email websites on pcs with big screens are still probably your major technology choice of the boomers um so but they're begrudgingly and sort of getting used to mobile um, one of the largest growth spaces for facebook for example is in the boomer generation because they're checking in on what their kids and or grandkids are doing. And so as you look at that, that's opening things up, but they're probably not going to be on Snapchat. They're probably not going to be on Kick or Elo. And they're probably not going to be leading the front lines on new technology. Again, bigger text, easy to read, lots of context. They like to be able to research and grow and build things in. You know, they still like printed materials and they understand and remember a time when it was a little bit simpler and there wasn't so much hammering you all the time as far as data and information. They really do value face-to-face -face communications and connections and anything that can replay that. You know, digital video is a huge indicator and it's a, is a great way if you can have a headshot or a talking screen where you have video on your website or on your mobile device where people can browse a YouTube channel and talk to someone, quote unquote, to connect, that's going to be a great way to reach the boomers. And again, high-end material items, things and, the, things and people that understand things, they're into status and digital stuff. They get it. They're, they're begrudgingly getting, getting more into all of that technology. But again, they haven't fully embraced the technology of the last few years because that's not where they were growing up. You know, they grew up again in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And so they have that kind of less or, or a slightly more detached from technology um, feel. So TV is big. Radio is big. Um, still some print <laughs> or newspapers. Um, but certainly as we get into the next generation, that slows things down quite a bit. Any questions or thoughts on uh, things? Looks like we're good, so I'm going to keep going. And uh, let's talk about Generation X. So interestingly enough, at BusyWeb, 85% of the folks at, uh, at our organization are Gen Xers. We have some wonderful millennials um, that we're working with that are doing amazing things for us. But um, most certainly in management, um, Generation X, between 35 and 51 years old. I would call these folks digital translators. You know, they grew up in the advent of the PC. If you look at the age ranges between, you know, 1965 and 1980, you know, for the oldest folks, you know, the early 70s to the mid 80s is when we grew up. And so that was a time of sort of upheaval but also just a time when media became easy to digest. When, it used, when you used to be able to play video games and interact on a one-on-one -on -one basis with your digital technology, it just became easy. Um, folks in Gen X tend to be either management or entrepreneurs. Or they've been around the block a few times and they have some experience. They're also kind of a sandwich generation. They're a little bit smaller and they're probably a little bit jaded about that. This is also the folks that, you know, grew up and or came came of adult age in the angst-filled 90s, you know, grunge and all of that stuff. So as you look at these folks, they have a little bit of a BS detector on them and they understand what the value of things is and they're into people, specific, or specifically small people, because a lot of us, a lot of the Gen X, Gen X folks in the 35 to 51 year old range are parents now. And probably thinking about their parents or the boomers. And so, you know, Facebook is huge for Gen X, of course, but also email and they understand text. 
They understand some of these new technologies. This is the first generation that really starts getting into in mass some of the newer, cooler things like Pinterest or um, Instagram, some Snapchat, and so are sort of the translators. They understand. They're kind of in the middle of all of this stuff where they can pat their heads and rub their tummies all at the same time, and they can speak digital, and they can also speak analog. So that's really the translation generation. Um, folks in Gen X tend to be loyal to their profession or to what they do, but not necessarily their employers. Remember, this is the late 80s, early 90s when, when things started being less certain. You couldn't be an IBM man or a General Mills woman and go through your entire career because there were layoffs in the 80s and 90s. And there was a massive upheaval in the early 2000s, and they were in the workforce, and remember that. Um, if you want to reach Gen Xers, provide lots of information and context, because yes, you'll capture their attention on social networks, but they're going to want to browse your website and dig deeper and get to know you as an organization, particularly if you're in a B2B kind of experience, because these are the folks that are generally making the decisions inside of B2B organizations right now. So in order to reach Gen X, provide lots of information and context. I provide, you know, and I talk about in conversations, a four-step marketing process, engage, inform, capture, and convert. And you really want to focus heavily on the inform part if you're trying to reach Gen Xers. And you need to capture their attention, but then there's no BS. You need to get right to the context of what you're saying. And you need to give them research materials and they expect to be able to click and browse and get more information. You know, digital video is still very, very beneficial and popular with Gen Xers. Um, starting to become an issue with readability. Um, also very easy and understand the technology of digital or mobile, mobile devices. That said, they probably prefer phone calls to text messages. You know, they'll do texting, but they still prefer to chat via voice and to connect via email instead of just sending texts, which is in stark contrast to our next group, which is, of course, the millennials. Millennials grew up in the range or in the age of the digital world. You know, These are from 81 to 2000. PCs were readily available and the internet was well on its way when they were coming of age. And so they prefer text. They prefer mobile devices. When you're connecting, you're going to Snapchat them or text them. Um, instant communication and instant feedback is a huge thing. This is the, this is the generation that's catching the most flack right now. And some, sometimes rightfully so, but a lot of times there's always the upcoming generation gets a lot of malignment because of the social changes that come with a new group taking power. And the millennials are really that group right now. There's going to be 75% of the workforce is going to be millennial by 2025. This is a huge group, probably rivaling the baby boomers in size. Um, they're entrepreneurial. They want to make a difference. They feel entitled to rewards. You know, one of the jokes is that everyone got a, a ribbon for participation in the millennial generation. They feel and they deserve to get recognized for what they do. They're not as career centered as they are wanting to just make a difference. And so connecting with personal stories and connecting with entrepreneurial spirit sort of connections where you give them the opportunity and let them make the decision, let them take control, let them move forward. That's what digital natives feel comfortable with. And they are digital native. They like to share and interact online. These are the, this is the group that's going to provide probably 85% of all online feedback. So Yelp and Facebook reviews and all of that stuff, most of those folks are millennials. They're not at all shy about sharing their feedback, their input, and their connections. They're just used to multi-screening. So they've got an iPhone or a Android in their hand at all times. 
they're chatting, they're texting, they're connecting back and forth with people. There's no line between their analog life and their digital life. It's just all one thing. And so capturing attention becomes a big part of the millennial connection. So humor, novelty, shiny content, you know, face swap on Snapchat and all the different filters and things that you can do inside of Snapchat. Snapchat, Pokemon Go, getting out and connecting with that generation. Pokemon came of age in the er in the early to mid 90s, right when these folks were, you know, in school, they were the ones that were collecting these the first time around, Pokemons. And so millennials are taking over this Pokemon Go craze that everyone sees. And there's some older folks that are doing that stuff too, but they're definitely leading the charge. The thing with millennials is they understand that they are a big deal and they understand that they have a big place in the workforce and that's only going to grow. And they're also in their 20s and 30s. And that's just the time of life when you feel that you're empowered and you can do anything. And so that's kind of how they approach life and how they approach their communications. You know, this is the group and the, the connection that really they tweet about and Facebook about, if they're on Facebook anymore, about everything. They take pictures all the time because they've always had a device that could take pictures readily and easily. There wasn't the Polaroid um, flip cameras. They just have real um, digital and instant communication options, and it's always been that way for them. So that's a big group, and you know, you just have to be willing to tinker to capture attention and to be able to provide ready depth if folks do take that next step with you. Generation Z, yeah, these are all kids. These are, these are folks that haven't graduated from high school yet. Um, they're almost entirely mobile. They've always had a device on their screen. When they were uh, in 2007, they were already reading and ready, so they don't remember a day before the iPhone. They don't remember a day where phones had buttons. They just remember the times when information was always and instantly available to them. Um, my kids, who are Generation Z, They've had an iPad since before they could read. They could they could check on things. They they know and and understand intuitively how to point, click, and poke at everything in the world. There's not a bridge between finding or between wondering information and being being able to get access to that information. It's just a click and a poke away. They grew up in a post 9/11 world, so there is some financial and geopolitical angst. But in general, again, these are all kids that are naturally optimistic for the future. They understand and they, they don't remember a time when there wasn't terrorism at the front of, uh, at the front of the political environment. But they do believe and they think that there's a solution and they're willing to look for it. And by and large, as you get younger in age, um, ten, you tend to be more liberal and so, you know, as, as these things go, there's a lot more of, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, the Bernie Sanders movement, the folks that are feeling like this isn't fair and we have the ability to change. And why can't anyone get married? And why can't any of these social things? There's just none of that angst and there's less background that's holding people back and or focusing their perspective on the world. They're more malleable. And so, you know, they're much more susceptible to media and much more susceptible to digital marketing. And so, you know, there's there's still a bunch of things that we're learning specifically about Generation Z because there's there's a much more nuanced and digital understanding of how the world works. I think the generations, as they continue to get younger and the more time overall in their lives that they've been exposed to always on information, the better the BS detector goes. So, you know, I'd say, you know, especially for traditionals and boomers, they more take media as gospel. You know, if they see something on a website or if they see something on TV news, 
they're like, oh, well, that must be it. And in this entire range and age, you know, there's the right wing and the left wing media, and you either identify with one or the other, and you tend to stick to your camp. I'd say it gets more blurry as people get younger, and they tend to resonate with messaging that reflects their experiences. And the big thing with all of the generations is that they respond much more positively to narrative, to stories. We've always been a storytelling race or, you know, our, our humanity embraces telling stories and sharing experiences. The more you can do that without trying to sell, the better you're going to be as a marketer. So how to use technology in general? Of course, the web is really the foundation of all this stuff. So websites are absolutely not going away. What happens with websites is that becomes the foundation upon which everything else controls and connects. Snapchats will come and go. Facebook is going to continue to change their modes of operation and there's going to be new and interesting and more attention grabbing tech as we go. And we're going to see the advent and what we'll probably see that Generation Z is going to experience is breaking down the third dimension as far as an interactive. This is going to be the generation that has always had virtual reality such as it is. They'll, they'll understand how to work inside of 3D space more than any of the prior generations. The web will always be there as the place you go for more information. This is the spot that businesses will always completely own. You'll have your website and no matter what Snapchat or Facebook or Pinterest or YouTube does, that is what you own. Your blog, your storytelling arm of your website is going to continue to get more and more information and more and more important as people share and connect with how things work. Um, email is going to continue to be around. You know, that's how you most reliably push across all the different generations. You know, you don't, you know, millennials and Gen Zs, they don't generally even, or they, they don't nearly as much as Gen Xs and Boomers um, identify with an email address or check their email religiously, but it's still going to be there. It's, it's a public utility of the web. It's like water or electricity. Email is just always going to be there. Um, as far as social media, you know, Facebook is going to continue to be huge, but it's really the connector for everyone. Um, millennials and Gen Zs, um, Gen Zs are just starting to get onto Facebook because they finally crossed that age, that age barrier where they're, you know, 12 or 12 or older. And so they've always had that capability, um, sharing stories, sharing imagery, um, and being careful not to overshare is getting to be just kind of the de rigueur of the way people interact with the world. So Facebook pages and sharing and all that stuff. You know, interestingly, millennials and Gen Zs, they've had to grow up in a space where sharing the wrong thing is incredibly easy and can be incredibly damaging. And so they, they are kind of coming to terms with the fact that there is a privacy concern in the world. You know, boomers, Gen Xs, we've always kind of understood and been wary of technology because we saw it come of age. For the folks that have always had technology at their beck and call and at their fingertips, there's less of that. They're just used to sharing, you know, sexting and texting and doing all those things is just part of the way of the world for the two youngest generations. And they're going to come to terms with the fact that there can be things that you can do. It's really easy to be dumb online but the internet never forgets. And so you need to be careful with all of that stuff. Um, YouTube is great for engaging video. LinkedIn is going to continue to be relevant for B2B and for connecting in a corporate world. I'm really interested to see how all of this is going to pan out with Microsoft acquiring LinkedIn. I think what we're going to see is that it's going to become more like Twitter in becoming a public utility of the web. You know, Twitter is how news gets broken. All of the hashtags and things out there on the web that's all communicated via Twitter and Twitter continues to struggle with how to monetize all of that and to move it in because it's just like how, how do you monetize air 
It's just the way people connect in small itty bitty bites. I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn is going to trend more towards that as they continue to work on just providing value to the corporate world. And so that's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Snapchat, millennials and younger. This is the true tinkering and goofing around and playful way of communicating um, for certainly traditionalists and boomers to watch someone interact with Snapchat and the fact that you can send, you know, 50 or 100 snaps a day with images and text over the top of it and filters and, you know, silly, funny commentary. It's, it's a different way of speaking. It's really a different way of communicating. It's that's the digital natives and younger millennials and Gen Z. They just get how to communicate visually in a way that the older generations never had the opportunity to. You know, we were consumers, not constructors of communications. And so you need to be much more fluid and much more visual the younger you trend. Twitter is going to continue to be small messages and breaking news. And you need to find the mix that works for your customers in general and across all of the generational marketing. What you need to focus on is what the solution that your client is looking for. You need to understand your audiences. And to do that, you need to do a little bit of research. You need to do a persona for your ideal client and write up what the different generational folks inside of your realm are probably expecting. What do they experience? What do they expect to be communicated and on what tools? Do they expect mostly email? Do they expect to connect with you on your website? Do they want to get snaps from you? Do they want to get text messages? And how does all of that stuff work? Find the mix that works for you. The one thing that I'll leave you with on all of this is there is no spoon. Generations are completely made up. There's no one that completely agrees on date ranges or characteristics. When I was doing all of the research for this, pr for this presentation, the numbers and date ranges that I gave you, the names of the different generations, there's no one central governing body that agrees and that we've all agreed on. So people are all unique. We're all people and we all have different preferences. There are traditionals that are 85 or 90 that are Snapchatting. I'll guarantee it. They're all over it and they get it and they connect. There's also folks that are millennials or even Generation Z that much more prefer conversation. So there are kids out there that don't have TVs or internet. And so you need to connect with those folks at their level. Focus on providing value, context, and narrative. Share with people. People want to be helped and have their needs met not to be sold. One thing that's happened as generations have come across and as we've gotten, and especially as I've analyzed how this goes from traditional to boomer to X to millennial to Gen Z, the, the context moves from broadcast or pushing content out to masses and hoping that the numbers are going to work out to pulling conversation and engaging people in conversation. We've gone from standing on the corner with a sandwich board and a bullhorn to becoming the party host. We engage people in conversation. We provide and we entertain. We draw folks in instead of shouting out. And so the, the tool set that marketers need is much more that you need to be a conversation starter more than anything else. So in summary, you know, we're all new, we're all unique, but we're also shaped by our times. You know, there is no spoon this this generational stuff by and large, you know, there's there's no hard and set rule. You know, this this is helpful guidelines at best. But among those guidelines, folks that are older than 71, traditionals tend to value people and tangible benefits. They're wary and they're harder to reach digitally. Boomers, they value face-to-face -face and they're moving online reluctantly. They, you know, they understand this stuff. They can do it. They probably have an Android tablet of some sort or an iPad or a phone, but they still value that personal connection. Gen Xs tend to be the translators. They value their careers, their family. They're mostly parents and they're the translators between the bo boomers and the millennials. 
Millennials are tech savvy, they're mobile first, and they're digital native. They're entrepreneurial, they just get it. The world is their oyster and they can set their course. And Gen Zs are completely mobile. They're just multi-screen. They don't have a distinction between online and not online because the internet has always been like air for them. It's within reach at all times. So that's how to handle generational marketing. If you'd like more resources, you know, of course, go to busyweb.com slash events for training. Go to busyweb.com slash buzz if you would like an in-depth marketing analysis for your website. And then here's the link for our webinars if you'd like to review more. You can search now on the new BusyWeb website to reach and find all of that content. If you'd like to join our email list, just text BUSY to 22828. Watch your um, autocorrect on your phone because it tends to go to B-U-S-Y, but B-I-Z-Z-Y will get you subscribed to our newsletter where we share helpful tips, give you advance notice on webinars like today's busy webinar, and we share a lot of helpful content. Our goal is always with our busy web marketing and the outreach that we do is to be as helpful as humanly possible. We don't sell when you subscribe to our newsletter. Instead, we give you options and ways to connect up with helpful and interesting content, and that's our goal. So if you would like to help, get help, um, we would love to help you. Here again is how to reach me. You can get, it, get us at dave at busyweb.com, give us a call, or grab your buzz report at busyweb.com slash buzz. And I hope particularly today that you've walked away with this present from this presentation um, feeling like you understand how to communicate with people. Our goal, goal at BusyWeb is right in our tagline. We like to help our clients generate buzz without getting stung. And we very much hope that you have fun connecting and communicating and generating buzz for yourself. Again, I'm Dave Meyer. Thank you so much for joining us. Reach us next week at uh, BusyWeb from noon to one for our next Busy Webinar. And until then, thanks so much and have a great day. Talk to you soon.